Hello and welcome to the lab. My name is Ellie and I'm a graduate student at Northwestern who studies developmental biology. Specifically, I make movies of the fruit fly embryo as it develops. Let me show you around. This is my lab bench where I do most of my molecular biology. I work with DNA and perform reactions to put different pieces of DNA together and then amplify it so I have a lot of DNA at the end. I use pipettes like these a lot and put different solutions of DNA in tubes such as these. When I have the sequence that I want, I then inject it into fly embryos to create a new strain of flies. Now, let me show you the fly room. Welcome to the fly room. This is where we keep many bottles of different strains of flies, as well as hundreds of vials of different fly strains. Each bottle or vial contains flies with a different genotype or a different set of genes. The tape here shows the genes that make this bottle different from wild type or normal flies. Sometimes not all flies in the same bottle will have exactly the same set of genes. To distinguish flies from one another, we use what are called genetic markers. These can be curly wings, white eyes, or a dark body. Wild type or normal flies have straight wings, red eyes, and a lighter body. My favorite genetic marker are fluorescent eyes. Let me show you what they look like. Before I look at the flies under the microscope, I first have to make them unconscious so that they don't fly away. To do that, I use this plastic pad here that has tiny holes in it that emit the gas CO2. The carbon dioxide then displaces oxygen in the air and causes the flies to go to sleep. But don't worry, they'll wake back up again. A lot of my research involves watching embryos develop using a fancy microscope called a confocal microscope. In order to get embryos that I can use for imaging, I first take male and female flies that have the correct genotype or genes and place them into a plastic cage together. Then they then lay embryos on this bottom plate here. I use the tweezers to pick up embryos and put them into this little plastic bucket. I then pour bleach on, which will remove the outer membrane of the embryos, kind of like removing an outer shell. I then pick up the embryo again and place them on this plastic microscope slide. Then the embryos are ready to image. Now, let me show you the microscope. Here is the confocal microscope. It gets a room all to itself because it's a very expensive and sensitive machine. To prepare the slide for the microscope, I put a drop of oil over my sample and then a drop of oil onto the lens of the microscope. I then place the microscope slide very carefully onto the microscope.
Here's the computer that controls the microscope. Using these bars, I can set the color of the laser that I use to scan the embryo. Down here, I can set the wavelengths of light that the detector picks up. The computer then converts the detected light into an image. The development of a fly consists of a few main stages. First, female flies lay embryos. The embryos then develop and hatch to form larvae. Larvae then grow and grow and eventually form a pupa. Finally, fully formed flies hatch from the pupa. My research focuses on the early embryonic development of the fly, so this stage here. The embryo starts off as a single giant cell with a single nucleus. The nucleus then divides and divides until the embryo is filled with hundreds of nuclei. The nuclei then migrate to the surface of the embryo. Then, after about two hours into development, individual cells form around each of the nuclei. Now, let me show you some videos of embryonic development. This movie was created by the confocal microscope by collecting light transmitted through the embryo. You can see that around, around the outside of the embryo, there are little, little circles, which are the nuclei. Basically what you're looking at is a slice through the embryo uh, with the dark being the middle here and then all the nuclei around the outside. Each of the shutters that you see corresponds to a nuclear division, so when the uh, one nuclei becomes two, and so forth. You can see that after the 13th nuclear division, the cleavage furrow proceeds through from the outside of the embryo to the interior and it encases each of the nuclei in cell membrane. So this is the dark line right here that's moving inward. Once the cells are encapsulated by cell membrane, the process of gastrulation begins. So right now, this is the process of cellularization. And now when the cells all move inward and there's this swirling process, that is the process of gastrulation. This is a fluorescence movie that was created by the confocal microscope. It is a zoomed in portion of the surface of the embryo. The blue you see is fluorescence from fluorescent proteins inside the nuclei. This movie shows the process of nuclear division. This is another fluorescence movie created by the confocal microscope. The green spots that you see are spots where the information in DNA is being read. The spots show the location where molecules known as messenger RNA or mRNA are being produced. Here's another fluorescence movie created by the confocal microscope. All the little spots that you see are nuclei. Different nuclei contain different types of proteins. The stripes that you see that form across the embryo is a specific type of protein that serves to pattern the embryo. Thank you for joining me in lab today. I hope you have enjoyed learning about my research.